I think the Canadian stock market obviously will be slaughtered. And the Canadian dollar will be slaughtered. I mean, do, do you know one way that Canadian cars with a 20% tariff on them could still be affordable in the U.S.? How could that possibly be? Well, what if the Canadian dollar fell by 20 cents in a week? I know that sounds devastating, but think about it. If you just discounted everything in Canada by 20%, 20% off sale, <laughs> then that car would cost the same as it did before the tariffs, right? Americans could still afford it because they would be using American dollars. They would be buying with their real greenbacks our mini bucks. So it's, it's a tiny version of, of Venezuela where, where currency is worthless. If you make money worthless enough, if you make your currency worthless enough, you can sell anything to the world. It just makes you poor because you're really not getting a lot for it because anything we import... Well, now we've got to pay 20% more with, with our cheap currency, whether it's fruit or electronics or obviously foreign travel. I, I don't think that can happen to wealthy countries. Remember, Detroit, Michigan used to be the highest paid city in terms of the industrial wage in all America. Now it's, it's an unemployed black hole. Venezuela, as we learned the other day with Daniel Price, used to have a higher GDP per capita than Canada. Look at it now. I'm not saying Canada will go that way or go the way of Argentina, but it is not impossible for countries to rise and then to fall. And it's not just the auto sector that the banks all talked about in their studies because this NAFTA fiasco, it wouldn't happen in a vacuum. Remember, it's happening at the same time that Justin Trudeau was destroying the oil and gas and pipeline industries and, and we can't get anything built and the courts and he's bringing in Bill C-69 to make it even harder. Look, Justin Trudeau really doesn't want any industry in this country. So you layer this new auto tariff on top of what he's doing and really, would you invest in Canada's economy if you were an international company? Not in the energy industry, that's for sure. Not in manufacturing, for any kind of manufacturing. And, and if a trade war is on, then, then maybe, it, it, maybe it's really on, the war. I mean, maybe it escalates. Trump does that sometimes. Maybe Trump, while he's at it, wants to add, oh, access to our banking industry wants to add access to our cell phone industry. What I mean by that is that you could go and open up an account with Wells Fargo downtown or Citibank or whatever. I don't know what the American banks are. That's the thing we don't know. We have the choice. Well, what Canadian would be uh, upset by that? If, if Trump wants access to our cell phone industry, I think Canadians would love, I think Canadians should hope we get American competitors for both. Wouldn't you like to be able to get better interest rates, lower fees at your bank, even if it were owned by American shareholders? Wouldn't you like cheaper cell phone service? Who wouldn't? Does any real Canadian actually love our cable or bank companies or our, our, our cell phone companies? I don't think so. Again, if a trade war is on, just like it is in dairy prices, maybe Canadians could wind up the winners after all if Canada finally agrees to do a deal. But in the meantime, expect every single thing to become more expensive. So to recap, if that tariff comes on, you got a plunging dollar, you got a plunging stock market, you got auto factories getting ready to relocate to America. Same thing for the support industries for the auto industry, thinking of re relocating to America. Or frankly, to Mexico, why not? Now that they have a deal and we don't. Investment freeze, total investment freeze. Who would put money into any part of the Canadian economy to build a factory if those factory products couldn't enter the US too? I suppose if the whole country became cheap enough because of a low dollar and an investment drought, maybe someone could come in and buy things at a salvage value. Maybe it would be Americans, I don't know, Warren Buffett, or maybe some of Justin Trudeau's best friends in China. Don't laugh. They still have a lot of foreign currency just sloshing around, and Canada will be on sale, remember. All the banks say we'll be in a recession. You saw their studies. Imagine how real estate prices will fall, especially in Toronto. I'm not just talking about individual Chinese people buying up cheap real estate personally. I'm talking about massive investments by Chinese companies, buying Canadian companies that are damaged or underpriced. It's just a possibility. Now, the media party will be unanimous about all this. It's Trump's fault. Trudeau is the hero who bravely fought for Canada and Canadian pride. He protected us. Or at least he protected Quebec's few thousand dairy farmers and he protected the CBC. Those are the last two deal breakers for Trudeau in this fake negotiation, the dairy industry and cultural industries. For that, he'll kill the auto industry and so much more. 
The media party knows it will be the right thing to do because Trump. But for 160,000 auto workers, that means 160,000 families. Yeah, I don't think they'll be able to get over the fact that they're now unemployed and anyone whose retirement savings are now worthless because of our dollar or our stock market, that will be hard to understand. Anyone who's socked away their life savings in their house that's now worth 30% less, that'll be hard to understand. And the recession and the reduction in tax revenues to the government, so the government cutbacks to social services and the higher interest rates, that's what a trade war with Trump will look like. If you doubt it, ask Turkey. Trump just tweeted about a trade war. Bam! Their economy went into a tailspin. I don't want any of this to happen, by the way. I wanted the deal Trump offered Trudeau on live TV. Remember this? Justin has agreed to cut all tariffs <laughs> and all trade barriers <laughs> between Canada and the United States. A quicker-witted prime minister would have said, you've got a deal, Donald. Now let's go play golf since we're done. But Trudeau doesn't want a deal, does he? He wants a hateable enemy. And Donald Trump wants more factories. I think they'll both get what they want. Everyone will be happy. <laughs> Except Canadian workers. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show, weekdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. Every day I do a monologue, interview a guest, and read my fan mail and my hate mail. To subscribe, go to therebel.media slash shows.